I have something in common with Ashley Johnson. We both got COVID. If you don't know why I didn't post a recap of episode 20, it was because I got COVID and wasn't up to getting into drag and filming. Ironically, I'm convinced I got COVID going to physical therapy, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, Ashley missed episode 21 because she got COVID. Will Ashley be well enough for episode 22? My guess is no, because I was told I needed to quarantine for five days and then wear a mask for five days when I'm around people. But I'm sure every case is different, so we shall see. Who am I? I am the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. So this recap and review will combine episodes 20 and 21, which actually ends up making a lot of sense because both episodes together make up the museum heist storyline. And by the way, there will be spoilers. I've been up front that I am not a huge fan of this storyline. First of all, I just don't think it makes any sense. There's a contest among Evan Hytroga and his two rivals, Gianna Hexum and Isha Sabanis. Gianna and Isha will each send a team to try to steal an earring from Evan's museum. And the team that steals the earring wins the contest. If neither team steals the object, Evan Hytroga wins. I mean, what? <laughs> you know that the museum is going to get trashed, not to mention it's also Evan's personal residence. None of it makes any sense, at least to me. Also, this storyline doesn't seem to connect to any of the major plot points that's been developed in the story arc so far. I thought there may be a big twist at the end, but no. There was no big twist, but there was a teeny tiny twist, which we'll get to later. But for the most part, the heist contest was pretty much what it was presented to be. Now, I know not every episode can be in support of the main storyline, and I've said as much before. We're going to get shopping episodes and road trips and other types of episodes that don't seem to move the story forward because that is the nature of Dungeons and Dragons. But just objectively looking at the story episode by episode, I'm going to call out when a side quest or tangent just doesn't seem to go anywhere, especially if it's set up by the dungeon master. And I think that's what's going on here. But that said, I really enjoyed the museum heist. It was basically a mini dungeon crawl. It brought me back to my very first introduction to Dungeons and Dragons back in high school when everything was on graph paper and would have to draw a map of the dungeon as the DM described it, which often didn't line up exactly to what the DM had. And he never corrected us if we did some mapping wrong. Anyway, the first dungeon turned out to be a crashed spaceship which at the time I thought was so creative and brilliant. Back then we didn't have any dioramas and I don't even think we had miniatures. I can't remember. But Matt Mercer of course has dioramas for each level and miniatures. But I loved how he covered the diorama up and only revealed it room by room as the party explored the museum. That was pretty amazing. The contest starts off with the Verdict, which are the champions of Isha Sabanis and Bell's Hells, who of course are the champions of Gianna Hexa. Bell's Hells has apparently not cased the joint or did really any preliminary setup because <laughs> obviously they were more concerned about investigating the Red Storm and the Loomis twins. So they don't seem to have any sort of plan. What ends up happening is Chetney and Ashton follow two of the Verdict members who are attempting to enter the second floor. Chetney turns invisible and manages to follow them, but Ashton has to go back and join the main group who are breaking into the first floor using brute force. <laughs> Chetney basically messes with the Verdict members who he's following until they finally get caught up in one of the house's traps. 
Then Chetney gets caught in a lightning trap that the party was trying to set up for the verdict. They do manage to lock some members of the verdict out of the main floor using the immovable rod. FCG casts a locate object which points down. Each museum room has some alleged artifact on display with a little plaque with a saying that always seems to end and in ellipses. That one reads, <laughs> <laughs> Masthead of the Hungry Fathom, renowned ghost ship of the Osmet Sea, born from the sinking of the historical Hespet pirate captain Eldor Trornak. This recovered portion of the original ship is said to call out its spectral counterpart. How scary, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> you also notice now all these plaques end in, ell in ellipses. <laughs> <laughs> he, he makes he makes very strong use of them. <laughs> the traps were great. We get a hallucinatory gas trap, which makes the entire party think they're falling down a pit. And uh, as you like, step no up to the front and look behind the area, the statues kind of shift and kind of look towards the platform. You hear the faint shift, and where the helmet's faces are. Uh oh. I'm you up. just hear this kind of weird, windy sound. Um, Ladna, fresh cut grass, no. fern, orum, and Ashton. <laughs> you <laughs> watch as the stone floor of this entire chamber cracks, crumbles, and then falls out from under you. You all immediately plummet into a dark expanse. Oh, we're hundreds and hundreds are we of balls? feet. Yeah. So you are we're just balls, you are right? plummeting into an into an endless abyss below. Together gonna, or are we alone? Uh, together it looks like. Okay. I'm going to shoot it. out my grappling cannon to try to latch it to the side of the okay, wall. Okay, go ahead and roll, go ahead and roll to to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not it just did not work. <laughs> Chet me. Uh <laughs> Imogen. You both watch as the rest of your group just standing there begins screaming. Just screaming to nothing, and their arms are out this, and they're just screaming and flailing in the space, and Fresh Cut Grass wheels around and fires the grappling hook. We'll say. I nobly tackle Imogen out of the way. Towards you, Imogen. Oh, God. Um, so I need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. <laughs> Nine. Nine. Go ahead and roll damage on the grappling. <laughs> it's a d10 um, for damage. It's this, right? Mm-hmm. Two. Oh. Take two points of piercing damage. Ow! Your, your grappling hook <laughs> finds purchase on the wall. Do you try and pull yourself to the wall? Right in her ass. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, okay, boy. you pull yourself to the wall. Ow! You find yourself now, Imogen, Ow! pulled over to fresh cut grass, like speared by the harpoon. <laughs> But then it comes loose and you're falling again. Oh no! Oh, God! Oh. We find out what the creepy marionettes from the toy store were used for. Remember, the toy maker said six were commissioned, but only five were picked up. Well, we find out those five were enchanted and stuck in the museum, and they have this attack, which, if you fail your saving throw, makes you laugh uncontrollably. Oh, the marionettes. Shit. <laughs> drop from the ceiling. Right, so they're, they're, they're smaller than a humanoid. In fact, they're pretty close to the one that you had uh, purchased in the city. Oh boy. All right, you take five, I'm oh, sorry, seven points of psychic damage, and you start cackling as well, and are incapacitated. <laughs> Fuck, I'm um, not doing well. You take five well. points of psychic damage, and you become incapacitated, will join the laughter as well. So, but the last one here is going to Look at you, Ladna. Someone tell a joke. Ladna, make a wisdom saving throw for no. the last ones over here. I don't Who made a get save? the joke. So far, just for an uh -oh. Eleven. Oh, oh no. wow! Really? You take six points of psychic damage, oh, no. and you start cackling with everybody and are incapacitated. <laughs> so currently, now it's just Orem and Fern standing as all of your friends around you are now slack-jawed, wide-eyed, and cackling along with these dolls. Probably the most dangerous trap was a pit that had some sort of green slime or slime monster at the end. 
Now slimes and jellies are always the worst because if you fall into them they dissolve your body so you can't even be resurrected or raised dead. Chetney falls into that trap and Orem eventually has to save him, but not before we find out Chetney's big weakness. Let's not cause another As problem. As the floor yet. rises yeah. up, you can see parts of it reach out and you don't notice it at first. Like your your ankles just go a little numb. And as you're looking up and growling at Orum, you suddenly feel the numbness and you look down and up to your knees is currently swallowed by this, this weird slimy floor, which you now can see within it. There are all manner of bones oh, just free floating within it. All right. 15. <gasps> One foot slips a little bit, the other one you push off, the claws go outward, and you grasp Orm's hand. Uh, I, get, I get one claw in the forearm. Yeah, Sorry. Oh. Sorry! Which is important, because, because even as you grab, you feel him begin to slip from the, the grease and oil that was on him, but that one claw gives just enough leverage and it hurts, and I will see you take a point of piercing damage. It feels like a tendon, man! <laughs> But with that, you all feel the rope pull with a heavier weight on it. The growling still remains, and you can still see the, the intelligence and <laughs> humanity behind Chetney's wolven eyes, but there's something unsettling about this interaction. There's something feral behind his visage that makes you feel uneasy as you begin to be pulled up out of the darkness in this chasm below. Are you sure that's not just Travis? <laughs> <laughs> I will say, because you guys barely made it, it's a slow ascent, which means one more wisdom saving throw. <laughs> this is a slow ascent. It's a four. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? You're going to kill him? So, as you just managed to pull Orem and Chetney up from this greased opening, He's out. He's you, out. you pull out of the, out of the entryway. <sighs> just as the growl turns into an angry roar, and you need to make an attack roll against Orum. <gasps> what are we doing, uh, with hand or mouth? Uh, just uh, my claw, claw okay. strike. Uh, 21 to hit. Oh my. Hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, nine points of slashing damage. What is Shh. happening? Can I use a? Can I react to this? Yeah, you all. You can all. Can I cast all, command on on? So you certainly can. Me and I'm just going to try to control him and say stop. Right. So go ahead. It's wisdom or charisma. It is a wisdom. Wisdom saving throw. Uh, 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 yeah. Been making a lot of those. Uh, uh, Ten. You fail. So you have so to stop. So you <clears throat> stop. I was stop anyway. Oh well. Shit. And hold yourself there for a minute. <laughs> they avoid a trap triggered by walking on tiles that will trigger some sort of flame trap. And then they find the earring, and they find it's protected by two golems. And this ends episode 20 on a cliffhanger. We open episode 21 with the news that Ashley isn't going to play because of COVID, but the party is going to run Vern's character while she maybe occasionally calls it on the phone with uh, instructions. Now this is always dicey, running someone's character when they're not around. Case in point, Laura couldn't bring herself to make a roll for Fern that could have ended badly. Oh my god. <laughs> Having fun, Ash? You can't kill her when she's not here, Matt. I am you just following the tactics no, of the I'm battlefield. Just... No, you missed. And that is a 12. Missed! <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, well, that's lucky. The other yeah, one, the other one is going to forego its two attacks to do a grapple and throw. So, no! uh, I need I need Fern uh, to make an athletics or acrobatics check. As it's now one of its arms reaches out to try and grab her like over the shoulder and torso as she's running through What's to the next room. Her, her acrobatics is higher. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and roll that. Can't Ashley roll? No, 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 roll. I have a special Too much dive pressure. That's smaller than a Do you want me to roll? Yeah, you want us to roll? Yeah, somebody else roll. Okay. I can't, I can't. Okay, okay so roll, roll a d20 oh, and no. you Why tell what to add. It's not you, it's the cold universe. <laughs> the party gets the earring and then tries to run away from the golems without engaging with them because it seems like that the golems are very much outclassing the party. But twist. 
The Verdict has used that immovable rod that Bell's Hells used to trap them to trap Bell's Hells from exiting. So we get this great setup. Go get I'm, out! I'm gonna. Yep. Yeah, no, I can't do it. You're so I'm gonna. Front. I'm gonna make a. Uh, I'm gonna make a jump out the. I'm gonna jump out the the door and. Well, actually, I've got rope on me. Get out the way. I'm gonna. I'm gonna drop the rope and I'm gonna hold just one end of it and jump off over the the hidden tiles. Okay. Well, you're past the hidden tiles. I you're, mean the the pit. Oh, the other side. oh the. Well, the door is closed. Into the in that room there. Jump the door is closed. Oh, I'm opening the door. the door. It doesn't move. Why? Did it lock when bastards. we closed it? The bastards! Or did we the lock it? Wait, no. It behind. No, 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 the no. The other fucking team. No, they didn't take the rod and unclick it and then unclick it. It's behind. not budging. Oh, oh man, no, you can't do this! Oh, dude, I heard it! That's our trick! No one knows that trick but us! Man, you can't make it! You left it behind! I'm not, I'm not spending more than one punch on that before I'm going the other way towards the monster. Fuck! Okay. They eventually are able to overcome the golems, and then they listen for the verdict to finally come in, hopefully through the fire trap room. And they do. And when they're in the room, Imogen uses telekinesis to spring the fire trap on them. Not once, not twice, but three times. Then you begin to hear just ever so gently. You then immediately hear. <laughs> Tell that! <laughs> the sound of heavy stone on stone. <laughs> you see from underneath the door the very faint gap oh on the top God. and the bottom, bright orange light. And the, the temperature you immediately sense from the other side of the door get very, very warm. And you hear multiple voices go, <laughs> The door is very, very warm in the space around you. You, you Now the door is now being pressed upon. Like, <laughs> over and over and I hope warm, so you're just like. I'm, I'm just putting the hammers just down. And so the pulls it. You hear the voices on the side, like the fire has subsided, and you hear like, trigger it again. Yeah, can I try it's to? Working. I'm gonna try to trigger it again. <laughs> the, the wood is now. The door is now catching fire. You can now see flames are starting to lick at the they top can run side back of it. Anytime they want. <laughs> they could piece out of this real easy. What about the screaming? Are they screaming? Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. What about the screaming? <laughs> Don't okay. Screaming. Hold on. I'm gonna roll some more damage oh here. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the tiger starts moving. Tiger's lion. <laughs> Run with the tiger. Okay. Tiger's yeah. bright. That's a lion, Daddy. <laughs> Eventually, the <laughs> like <laughs> subsides, <laughs> and you hear a voice go. <laughs> Seven roaches down. Help me! Oh, oh we killed one! Oh no! Trigger it again! Oh, gosh, it's just unconscious. <laughs> we don't kill him, right? No, He's we just unconscious. Help him. We should be See if they lose heart. See if they lose heart. We can. You just need them to retreat. We need them to retreat, right? You can stabilize, right? You hear two of the voices stabilize. come in, and like, quick, catch him! I don't know what went wrong! I could do it, I could do it again. And you hear them like, there's, there's, there's a couple of them that are now in the process of trying to leave the room. Do you do anything? Oh, they're trying to leave? Uh, do you, do Hit, him you want to Hit him again. Hit him again. They I threw the unconscious guy out. That's true. They threw what? They threw the unconscious guy out. He was like, here, catch him, right? Isn't that what he said? So you heard. They're still in there. Hit him again. I do it again. Oh my oh. god. Oh, We're playing for keeps. It's just like that. What was it like that? That old uh, psychological We've experiment. Gone full yeah. We've gone full keyless. <laughs> oh, There's no kids in here. Stop it. Stop is, is this bad? I mean, hmm? they could have. Oh, oh. hmm? They got him out of the room, right? He was out of the room. We don't know yet. One of them was. Oh no. It's the Milgram experiment. Where you keep pressing, keep a, pressing button. a button. <laughs> I don't hear screaming anymore. Why are you screaming? Keep pressing the button, please. <laughs> Just program delusion. It's fine. <laughs> wow. Okay. Fucking terrible. 
The verdict is practically decimated and Bells Hills does try to help heal them up. And at this point, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but Ashton seemed to be uncharacteristically hostile to the whole heist contest and wanted revenge. I don't like people trying to kill me. That sure. was not part of this fucking deal. Sure. <clears throat> but sometimes you just gotta get over the shit and make it better, right? No, no, sometimes you just gotta hold a fucking grudge. Well, he can go back upstairs and look for shit. No, no, I'm, I'm good to leave, but I think I'm gonna have to have some fucking words. If everyone thinks it's good to go, then it's good to fucking go. Are you all right, Ashton? I've never no. seen you this K okay. <laughs> all right. Do they have anything else on you? No, I just, I don't like being lied to, that's all. Do you think this had to do with your lady or it was just all on this man? I think he's just a piece of shit. It's an interesting point though. What if she set you up? No, oh, it doesn't sound like her. Is there anything else that you could do that would mm. make make you feel like you got retribution or, or what what you what you're looking for? Yeah. Are you gonna punch him in the face? Probably. <laughs> well wait till wait. You were notified by Gianna Hexen that as an additional bonus to this would be uh, creating or finding or, or doing something that was significantly embarrassing, oh. uh, whatever that may be oh. interpreted as. For what it's worth, his bedroom was on the top floor. <laughs> Do you know how to get up there without setting anything off? I got real fucked up on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. <laughs> Did his reaction seem just a little over the top to you? Let me know in the comments. And while you're there, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. The party convinces Ashton that revenge could be in the form of stealing something from Evan Hydroga's residence on the second and third floors. And Ashton finds some papers and magic glasses in a locked safe that he's able to crack. They finally go outside and claim victory. Now, if this contest had presumably such high stakes, wouldn't you think that Gianna Hexum and Isha Sabanis would have been there to witness who won? But no. Anyway, like I said, the whole contest didn't make a lot of sense to me, but it was a lot of fun. Since they stole from Evan Hydroga, they leave town as quickly as they can, but not before Chetney visits the toy maker but we don't learn anything much more other than Ultgar, who trained both the toy maker and Chetney, is a terrible person. And I'm sure at some point in the campaign we'll meet Ultgar. And I have to admit, I'm pretty curious about that encounter. They also run into Estani the astronomer, who gives them an introduction to the Grim Verity in Yeas, which is some sort of secret society that the Loomis twins belong to. As the party makes their way back to Drusar, they investigate the papers Ashton stole from Evan Hytroga, which are enchanted, and they discover something. Another letter is a report on Hexum's dealings <gasps> with outside dealers in Wildmount. Hexum? Yes, it is a. It is essentially a, a spy report on her work that's been oh, delivered to oh, Avery. Three shipments, months apart, and they are picked up shortly thereafter by an unknown figure. Each is a small, singular crate, about three foot by one foot by one foot. The notes around it are questioning if she's some kind of intermediary, because they're just coming to her, and then shortly thereafter, they leave her, saying things that need more details and possible legal activity. And such details can be very useful and insightful. And this handwriting you recognize as familiar handwriting. It is the handwriting that is inside the journal. The journal. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wow. Ashton, you, at the description of this, Hexum, this crate, the size, the shape of it, you remember when you were on the last gig with the nobodies, finding a crate like this. 
uh, things went fuzzy after that. You remember breaking in, um, you remember finding this, you remember pulling something from it. Uh, yeah, it, it you can't, you can't remember. Like, things got weird that night, and you woke up the next day, but there was, there was, there was something, it was, it was, you can't remember. Maybe my luck would help, but like, you, you have a very, Fuzzy memory, but you distinctly recall like a a box of this size and shape that kind of just caught your attention, and shortly thereafter, everything went dark and fuzzy. I'm gonna pull that page aside. Hide the this heist into some of the main plot threads. In this case, Ashton's subplot. So there's something going on with Gianna that he's now realizing, so we'll see where that goes. And this episode ends with the party leveling up and everyone rolling hit points, which is always exciting. We also do not end on a cliffhanger, which I kind of appreciate. Not every episode has to end on a cliffhanger. Like I said, I really did enjoy the heist contest, even though the setup didn't make much sense to me going forward. I think all roads are going to lead to Yeos, where they now have an introduction to the Grim Verity organization, as well as needing to visit the Omen archives for more information on the Rudius board. But I'm not really sure when they're going to head there. Next episode, I'm sure, will probably be in Drusar, where they'll collect the reward from Gianna Hexum. Maybe Ashton will not trust her as much as he did before because of what the papers revealed, so it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. What I'm hoping is that we'll get more follow-up on Lady Emoth and Armand Treshi. What do you think? I do recaps of Critical Role every week, and hey, I also do some graph chart races of Critical Role, and you can find one of them right here. Until we meet again, may all the books you read and the campaigns you play in be blessed.